Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today, we continue talking about chaos as we get into demon engines. Now, we've already done a demon engines video where we went into the specifics of demon engines, but this is an overall broader sense of what a demon engine is, and you get to, to learn how to uh, harness or how to summon a demon engine from the warp. Um, again, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we post Warhammer 40k content every single day. With that said, let's get into 40 facts about demon engines. Demon engines are beasts of living metal, towering engines of war, driven not by technology, but diabolical machine lore. They take many forms, from tracking behemoths to towering giants, and they carry a fearsome array of weaponry. Much of it is unknown or forbidden to the machine cannon of the cult Mechanicus. Within the armored shell of each demon engine is entrapped a denizen of the warp, a being dragged forth from the immaterium against its will and nature, sealed within the machine by the unreasoning hatred for the material universe in which they find themselves in. They seek only to shed the blood of its mortal inhabitants and to feast upon their unbound souls. They are as much a threat to their supposed masters as they are to the enemy, and must often be restrained with heavy warden chains between battles, lest they fall upon those who summon them in an orgy of bloodshed. Demon engines are the product of a tripartite blasphemy, for to bring one into being, a sorcerer, dark apostle, and a warpsmith, or dark magus, must come together in fell co-alignment. The sorcerer must utilize the forbidden dark arts to weaken the thin skin of reality and create a portal through which a demon may be drawn forth. The dark apostle must entreat the ruinous powers and bind the denizen to his ferocious will, thus dragging it through the portal the sorcerer has created. The warpsmith role is to provide the mechanical shell to which the demon is bound and to set the warding chains upon it so that the demon does not escape. Such a process is costly in the extreme, and each step involves some shedding of the blood of innocence and the invocation of unspeakable powers. The greatest danger is to the participants themselves, for any misstep, any weakness of resolve, or any misspeaking of the ritual incantation can bring about the doom of all involved. At the least, the summoning will fail, bringing down the ire of the warlord in whose name it is being incanted. At worst, the demon will come forth unbound or possess one of the three, and violence unimaginable will be unleashed. In some cases, those who seek to create the demon engine are dragged through the portal they have created and cast adrift upon the tides of the warp their bodies torn apart in seconds by the predators of the unreal dimension, their souls fed upon for all eternity. Those few savants of machine lore to have survived a close examination of any form of demon engine have noted that many feature some manner of containment vessel, often warded and chained tightly shut, and invariably aglow with the powers of the war. The exact nature and purpose of these devices remains largely a mystery, but several observations have been noted. Firstly, that the vessel is only present on war machines constructed in the realm of mortals. It has yet to be observed in engines brought in and summoned forth from the warp. It has been observed on blood slaughterers, for these are held to be made by mortal hands, but not the brass scorpions, which are held to be summoned from the abyss. Secondly, their vessel bears a disturbing resemblance to the cortex and reactor chambers utilized long ago by various machine constructs of the cult Mechanicus. Constructs also entirely consigned to history, as the mysteries of their construction and maintenance have been lost. Several tech savants and demonologists serving the Ordo Malleus now suspect that these vessels are used to draw forth and perhaps contain the infernal spirits within the demon engine. Indeed, breaching the vessel also has been observed to bring about the demon's escape and the catastrophic destruction of the engine itself. Though such an endeavor will secure the fall of the demon engine, the escaping spirit is wont to reap utter destruction as it is driven back whence it came from by the coldness of real space. 
making even its successful banishment a dangerous prospect indeed. These demon engines are brought to life and maintained by warp smiths. Warp smiths are those chaos space marines who serve as the masters of the machine, exuding an air of authority combined with a hint of insanity. They are the dark echo of the loyalist space marine tech marines. Most of these fallen chaos worshipping tech marines can trace their origin back to the priesthood of Mars, whether through the schisms of the magi or the rigid doctrines of the tech marines. However, where the Adeptus Mechanicus regards technology as sacred, the warp smiths seek to subjugate and control it. Experts in battlefield repair and the art of siege craft, their true calling lies in the soul forges of the warp especially those in the Eye of Terror. There they drive the machine spirits of captured Imperial vehicles and other weapons mad, as their physical forms are rebuilt into bestial and terrifying new shapes. The Warpsmiths preside over their infernal industries as pioneers of mechomorphism, as they watch demon princes thrust lesser demons into the cogs of giant, mechanoid birth factories that crank out new demon engines from their cable-lined wombs. When the time for conquest is finally at hand, entire armies of these growling battle engines stomp and soar into the material world. Under their command, the warpsmiths' bitter ambitions write large and set loose upon the Imperium of Man. Warpsmiths tend to be obsessive characters who believe that mankind's ambition is limited by its mortal nature. Demons are ultimately insubstantial of form, and machines, though physically indomitable, are all but inert. Because of this, all warpsmiths are engaged in the eternal quest to combine the strengths of all three of these elements, mortal, demon, and machine, while eradicating their weaknesses. They would conquer the galaxy and remold it into a giant, tainted flesh engine if they could. The Warpsmiths themselves seek to embody their unholy fusion of man, machine, and demon. In their search for perfection, they often become more metal than flesh. Some Warpsmiths are little more than a brain and a spinal cord wired into a metallic approximation of a Chaos Space Marine. Pincer limbs, mechadrites, and fusion claws sprout from the warpsmith's altered form, next to melta crucibles and searing welder blades. Warpsmiths work on their deadly machines in their forges, but the most famous is the Forge of Souls. The Forge of Souls exists entirely in the beyond, deep within the formless wastes of the realm of chaos. This hellish forge is permanently cloaked in a pall of black oily fumes rank with the acrid stench of forbidden metallurgy, dominated by a cacophony of grinding and the wailing of uncountable tortured spirits. This accursed place is where the blind, ever-mutating demon forge masters of chaos eternally hammer at their creations in cyclopean smiths. The black fires, an infernal process of these cavernous laboratories, are fueled by the souls of the damned and kept roaring by the colossal screaming bellows, manned by the legions of semi-sentient nightmare creatures. From the dark bowels of the Forge of Souls come all manner of hideous and unholy weapons. By means of the perverse technologies of the artisans of chaos, demonic energies are fused with arcane metals to create great jagged blades, sweeping swords, barbed steel whips, and other potent weapons and talismans to be used by the demons in their endless battle. But as lethal as such weapons are, they are mere toys next to the greatest constructs of the demonic smiths. Amongst the most potent of these is the terrifying demon engine known as the Soul Grinder, but countless other types, many entirely unique, exist. These terrifying creatures are the fusions of the most powerful of demonic entities, with machines of war that originate from outside of the Immaterium but already have felt the touch of chaos. These are often the wrecked remains of great demon engines and other possessed vehicles, like the mighty battle titans of the legal mortis, or the rampaging defilers created by the traitor legions. All this ruined material is absorbed into the warp as the floatsum and jetsum of the galaxy at war, flowing from real space into the immaterium through the Eye of Terror, the Maelstrom, and other local parts in the galaxy where different realities touch. 
In the ash plains outside the Forge of Souls, battles never stop, as many amongst the higher ranks of demonhood vie with each other and duel for a chance of being the one to fuse with the mechanical constructs and become a soul grinder. This is because unlike a possessed mortal body, these steel and ceramite shells can sustain a demon in the mortal world for Terran decades, even centuries. During this time, the shape of each soul grinder will change as their metal body slowly becomes more similar to the type of demon possessing it. Such a precious armored form does not come for free. Great is the price that the artisans of the forge invariably demand for each new soul grinder in return for the unholy incarnation. Before being released, the demons must take the three oaths of the Iron Pact with the master of the forge. First, that all souls harvested by the greater blades of the soul grinders will be used for the fueling of the forge. Second, that the wrecked remains of all the war machines destroyed by the adamantium claws of the soul grinder will be offered to the forge. Finally, and perhaps most significantly, that should one of the chaos gods attack the forge of souls and try to rule over it, all soul grinders will fight in its defense, discarding all of their previous loyalties to any of the four greater powers of chaos. When a dark magus or warpsmith enacts the rituals of the summoning and calls upon the service of an incarnate demon engine, it is likely that the source of the monstrosity is the forge of souls, and that every life that the machine demon thing reaps condemns yet another mortal spirit to an eternity within its searing furnace. And those were 40 facts about the demon engines. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any more suggestions, please comment down below. Uh, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you check out the video yesterday on the Plague Marines, uh, we have a giveaway going on right there. Uh, so don't forget to check that out. Again, guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to help us out a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos. With that said, catch you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.